Hey, hey, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody gets their sound and stuff properly. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of these videos we're playing. Welcome, everybody, comedians. Uh, are you are you with me? Let me get your unmuted, unmuted audio. Welcome to the new world uh, of of how life works, uh, of us doing comedy over Zoom. Thank you guys for all being here. Everybody who's involved in the audience here, you're in Portland. Shout out Portland, uh, or you're on or on, you're on a veteran Portland list. So, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting uh, uh, this country. And no, this safe. Um, I feel like people are randomly unmuted. I'm going to mute a bunch of people that are not comedians. Uh, yeah, comedians, how are you? Good. Doing great. Doing great. Shout out to the veterans from Portland and the, the veterans of Portland. People who were veterans in Portland and people who used to live in Portland but don't live in Portland anymore. And they're just <laughs> veterans. Yeah, and just a heads probably, up, that's, uh, that's Adam's real voice. That's not the first bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a high amount of Portland veterans who are also strippers because Portland has the most strip clubs in the U.S. I don't know why you know that, but I, I, I applaud you for knowing that. I knew it's that as thing. well. Yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, welcome, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you all for being here. Um, this is uh, this is the new world. This is Zoom comedy. I got Adam Gable, H. Allen Scott, and uh, Lance Weiss here, rocking on this uh, this event. Uh, you guys are are uh, are a big part of the show, and we appreciate you being here. As people keep joining, we're going to keep letting people in, so on and so forth. Uh, but shout out right out of the gate to. Um, to anyone who's not had sex with their ex during the quarantine, that's huge. If you haven't texted or had sex with your ex during the quarantine, uh, hats off to you. You're an incredible person. You're a hero out there. Uh, shout out to anybody who hasn't uh, beaten their spouse, their roommate, or their uh, child during the quarantine. That's, uh, that's an accomplishment. You're a hero. Shout out to anyone who's not moved in with their parents. If you moved in with your parents during the quarantine, number one, you put your parents in peril for catching the covid and number two like do we let you just be a regular person after this if you moved in with your parents and just like put stuff on the grocery list do you get to have sex after this i don't think so if you're not 20 to 22 years old you don't get to live with your parents in the middle if your parents still have a room for you and you're over 30 they knew you weren't going to make it that's on you and you got to figure <laughs> out your own life um, here's my quick relationship advice to anybody in your quarantine. My parents have been together for 42 years, so I understand how to make relationships work. Here's the trick, guys. Here's the trick to a long-lasting marriage. Never break up. That's it. You can stay together forever. That's how they used to do it back in the day. My grandparents did it. Uh, you know, nothing happened. If, if grandma and grandpa weren't getting along, just grandpa moved into the garage. That's all that happened, guys. All right? <laughs> just be an adult and just uh, live, in, live, live separate bedrooms. Um, all right. Let's kick this show off. My name is Dan Frigolette. I'm your host. I also have a podcast called Porn Stars Are People, where I interview porn stars and don't talk about porn if at all possible. I've been on three canceled television shows. Tonight is a humongous show for all of us, guys. All right. This is <laughs> um, welcoming my first guest. What order did I put you guys in? Uh, Lance Weiss. My first guest, Lance Weiss, coming to the to the Zoom. Uh, he's uh, let's 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 pump it, man. He's the owner of MeetingBombs.com, a brand new site. Uh, crushing the internet, where you actually come in and uh, people pay you to to bomb their Zoom meetings. Yeah, I got office. something in my eye just now. <laughs> okay, should I, I move on to another comedian? I, wasn't, I legitimately, you ever you ever just get something in your? eye? This isn't even a joke. You just <laughs> something, like something will fly into your eye out of nowhere. I literally just something. You can tell my eyes watering. Something yeah. literally just flew into my eye. I don't know. I don't know what from. This is good material right here. Yeah, this is the eye <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I have a meeting bombs.com uh, party with Lance. I like Jimmy got something in my eye, dude. It's like, how does something, <laughs> get, in your, how does something get in your eye when you're just sitting here? I'm not even doing it. It's like windy. I'm inside. But yes, I have a website called uh, meeting bombs.com where I'm, I'm going into people's Zooms and I'm bombing them. Uh, like, un, like people are hiring me to un, un, you know, not knowing, like, like I'd be jumping into this one with people not knowing and taking over the meeting. And it's going good, right? You got you got covered by uh, by Pix Eleven, and you've been doing you've been doing your thing, man. Uh, and you you actually the first one of these types of shows we did, you came in and bombed, which and you were hilarious. 
Yeah, thanks. It was a lot. It was a lot of fun. And uh, before this is all over, I'll put it in the chat at the very end of the show. Meetingbombs.com. Uh, this is a weird gig, right? They're doing the Zoom thing, trying to figure out how to be a comedian in this uh, this this new world. What um, what's the worst gig you've ever done? I mean, comedians, we know that that uh, there are there are horrible gigs left and right. What's uh, what tops the chart for you? Uh, one I had was I. Had, this is about three years ago at the Bronx Zoo. Myself and another comedian, uh, my buddy Brendan, who, who you guys will know, uh, the comedians, um, we were hired to do the 125th anniversary of a hospital. So it's all their staff. It's about 300 people, 250, uh, 250 300, you know, black, black tie, whatever, uh, people going around with champagne things. Somebody's playing like a, a, like a cello or whatever when you walk, like all the fancy event at the Bronx Zoo. I go up and I'm, I'm, we're each supposed to do 20 minutes a piece. I go up and do about, I think, 12. It, well, first of all, it was sober. People have been, like, eating eating for, like, two or three hours, and it was sober, round tables. Nobody's near the stage. There's a dance floor. No one's remotely – like, no one's in front of us. It's just, like, super far away. I go up and eat it for about 12 minutes. <laughs> I running was like, get them off, get them off, get them off. So then uh, then Bre Brendan, my partner, so it, we were like, oh, my God, this is going terrible. Then they did, it was 125th anniversary, and they did like an in memoriam of people who had passed away. Oh. Like, so they had a, proje a projector screen, and they were like, and you guys remember Mary Sue? She was with us for 20 years, and she passed away last month, and the whatever. And they go, you guys remember Joe? He was with us in HR, and he, and then they go, and now Brendan Fitzgibbons. Welcome to the stage. <laughs> and my had to go up there, same thing. And we already knew his, his dance floor, dude. People are literally crying because their loved ones have passed away. Right. I am, I am in the back on my knees howling, laughing, because I already had to take it, and I'm watching my friend now go up there and have to, like, dude, because when, when you bomb alone, it's horrific. It's, it's, house, right. it's like I was crying, laughing, watching him bomb yes. and have to go after that. I've had plenty of these gigs where, uh, where, where this type of thing happens, and then you have to have the discussion. You have to literally tell them. you got to go, no, look. Uh, do the video of the dead kid after the comedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Obviously, it's a very sad thing. It's a very terrible thing. But when they, they gave him no intro, the guy was just like, literally, it was like people don't like about 30 people over the past 20 years of dying. Right. And they're like, and now Brendan Fitzgibbons. And right. Well, that's the thing is like, we're there. We as comedians, we're there to like, like relieve the tension of the thing. But yeah. if you make us part of the tension, we can't, we can't relieve it. Like, it's not, it's the moment that you're like it you split up the wedding in a certain way there's certain times during the wedding you don't want a comedian walking on same thing you don't want the comedian walking on as they're showing the video of this life that's no longer with us exactly yeah but that you can't really win that scenario no there's no way to do it uh all right uh coming now to the to the zoom chat is uh h allen scott hey, uh h you're in uh i'm gonna call you h i can't do it with two names uh you're in la <laughs> can't deal with my own friggin name I yeah i'm in los it. angeles you're in LA, so you're representing the West Coast along with the yeah. crew here. Um, yeah. What uh, What was I going to ask you? So you've been on the Allen Show. You've been on Jimmy Kimmel. You're the big get on this show. Uh, Am I? Because that's really sad. You are. You've been, <laughs> you, you've been on Golden Girls. You've been on all the things. <laughs> um, I am. I have the Golden Girls background. Yeah, I want. I think I, I. Hopefully, everybody who's involved knows that. Lance, did you know that was a uh, Golden Girls? I did. Yes. I know Adam Who doesn't knows know that it's the golden girl. You thought it was the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It could go either way. Look, it's <laughs> Which every shows 90s you sitcom has the same the New set. Jersey public education system. Is. <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to I'll take the hit on this one, but I'm I'm a product of upstate New York, baby. New, oh, New Jersey's brother. hard because as soon as you move to New Jersey, they want to create your whole history for New Jersey. Well, Let me ask you this. I mean, um you have an issue back story. You were raised Mormon and then you converted to Judaism. Yeah, I converted to Judaism a couple of years ago. We made a movie about it, Latter-day Jew. Not out yet, but you can go to the website. Uh, and yeah, 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 I converted to Judaism, but I was raised Mormon. And the, the thing, I remember the first day I was Mormon was actually also kind of the last day I was Mormon in like a spiritual sense. Mormons baptize kids like later. It's like eight, nine, 10 years old. You have right. to be, you have to be able to like process that you're getting baptized. And I kept delaying my baptism because I was a faggot. And so uh -huh. I knew it was wrong for me. Like I knew that something wasn't right about me doing this. 
And so they kept delaying it, delaying it. I had so many questions. And then finally, I had to do it. But it wasn't that like faith made me do it. It wasn't that family made me do it. It was when you get baptized as a Mormon, there's a Mormon missionary that guides you in the process of being baptized. And mine was this like gorgeous dude who was like 19 years old, the prime of his body. You know what I mean? Like he could actually like bend over and not have things that aren't supposed to hang hang you know what I mean like he was, he was just perfect and I knew that I needed to be baptized at that moment and when you get baptized as a Mormon you are in a like a bath well you're supposed to be in like a body of water but really you're in a bathtub it's sort of like a jacuzzi and there's the elder that's standing above you and there's the missionary that's holding you delicately into the water dropping into the water and I was just thinking about this beautiful man holding me dipping me into this water now I at like 10 years old I, I I'm obese, right? Like I am like you're a big obese. boy when you're you're, you're a I'm, fat kid. I'm I'm always fat, and I I uh I you have to wear this like white robe thing, and you can't wear anything on underneath it. Now keep in mind, I'm a little bit older, so puberty is kind of starting for me. Oh, I'm and just figuring out where this story's going. Just 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 just. just <laughs> and so I am I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit older, and so I get dumped into this water, and I'm not thinking about Brigham Young when I'm in the water. I'm not thinking about Jesus or anything like that. I'm only thinking that my head, the top of my head, is inches away from what makes this man a man, if you know what I mean. And I start getting a little bit of a, of, of, of something is happening down there, and I get presented to my family. Wait, wait, what's this, happening? <laughs> Come on, you know what's happening. You know what's happening. I get presented to my family in this white, clingy, see-through robe. And that was the last day I was Mormon. That's when I knew I was gay. So what you're saying is uh, is a, a wet t-shirt contest and a wet underwear contest are really the same thing. That's what you're saying. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Very good. All right. Well, moving on. Adam Gable. Adam Gable, thank you for being here. Hello, I'm 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 very pleased to be here with you and H. Uh, Allen. A, and, and a big staple and part of the comedy's best kept secret tour. Uh, Adam, have we made it out to Portland together at all? I have not been to Portland. Uh, Portland's one of the greatest places to do comedy. Make sure that I uh, that I make that I include that next time we tour together. All right, hey, we'll do that. Quick. Little thing about Adam, he's a veteran. A missile took out his voice <laughs> box. <laughs> Uh, I'm also a veteran of jokes about my voice, right? That's what I'm, I'll tell you what I love about Lance. So my, I love about, this is my favorite thing about Lance is that he'll harp, he'll harp on a detail that nobody cares about. And he's telling you a story. He's like, yeah, there's like 300, there's like 300, 250, there's like 325, there's like 275 people there, like 285, it's like 310, it's like 295, like 300, it's like 307, it's like 298, it's like, like 300, 303 people at this party. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, banana peel. And you're like, I, I stopped listening right. a minute and a half ago. Just tell me about the fucking story. It's hard. It's hard, it's hard to keep Lance on topic. That's for sure. Uh, Adam, you're in quarantine. I know your story. I know kind of what's going on. What, uh, what have you found to be the most, um, like, important, I don't know, object, item during the quarantine? Oh, during the quarantine. Well, you know what's been really super helpful, not just during the quarantine, but my whole life, has been uh, Ziploc bags, right? People... People think, because you can use those things, you can use them for anything, right? Like, like here's an example. One time, one time I had to throw up uh, on the subway, right? And all I had with me was a one gallon Ziploc bag. Oh. I filled that thing up all the way. Oh my. How was and, that the only thing you had with you on the subway? And there <laughs> were no leaks. Hey, was- Allen, he's doing a bit, leave him alone. <laughs> Well, actually, I had several different options, but when you work on jokes, you cut out the parts that aren't important. <laughs> so, so, what, so, what is, so what did that, uh, what, what, what did that dog Anyway, so let me tell you, <laughs> the, the whole point is I filled the thing up. There were no leaks anywhere, and I'm thinking that Ziplocs, people don't know about the service at Ziploc. They're missing, like, a huge advertising opportunity. You know what I mean? Like, like it could be like, uh, like Ziploc will store your food when your stomach doesn't want to. Or, uh, or uh, about uh, Ziploc, we've got you covered no matter what comes up. Oh, okay, one more, one more, one more, one more. Ziploc, don't wait, regurgitate. 
Yes, got it. See, see, that's what's what we're doing here. We're just a variety show. H, we're doing this thing. You're, you're H now. You're, it doesn't matter. You're in it. Um, all right, let's let's go into um, some of the things that I've been trying to occupy my time with um, with my Instagram, trying to figure out what how to trend, how to be whatever. I've gotten obsessed with dad jokes while we're in quarantine because I can't tell real jokes to people. So I've been telling dad jokes on my Instagram story, and I pitch it with dad jokes, dad jokes. And then I tell a dad joke. I'm going to tell a dad joke, and then I want to see if you guys can tell me some of your favorite dad jokes. This is for all the comics. Uh, and feel free to laugh or not laugh as, as it goes. We all love dad jokes. Um, all right, comedians, how do you get a squirrel to like you? Ow. Ow. <laughs> Act like a nut. Dad jokes, dad jokes. But sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't feel like a nut, right? Adam, dad jokes, you're up. Oh, I just did it. Oh, you wanted that? Um, uh, why couldn't the motorcycle win the race? Oh, I love this one. Why? Because it was too tired. Too tired. Boom. Dad jokes, dad jokes. Dad jokes, dad jokes. H. Allen, what do you got? Dad joke. Uh, I think I've heard this one before. I don't know. I don't know if it's mine or someone else's. But it's not yours. It's you, a dad joke. It's not mine. It's a dad joke. You're right. If you see a rock, I have to say that though because I'm a professional. You know what I'm <laughs> um, if I see, if you see a robbery at an Apple store, does that make you an eyewitness? <laughs> dad jokes, dad jokes, Lance. <laughs> No, check out this owl that I drew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't see it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you know how to use the internet? Uh, it's not working. It's not really working with the... Back uh, it Google. off. Hey, look at it. There it is. Boom. Look at that. You didn't draw I, that. I, yeah, I did. That LW. That's me. I drew this owl. Uh, on, <laughs> on your phone? I do it in Photoshop. You drew it on your finger? No, in Photoshop. Are you just not going to tell us a dad joke? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I was showing you the, the uh, thing that I made. That's what dads do. Here's some flowers. Okay. <laughs> Are you just not, you're just not going to tell us a dad joke? Yeah. Lance hey, is ruining, all, he's he's ruining my entire pre prepared program here. This is a real joke. that I don't know whose it is either, and I, I said it before. It's not <laughs> mine, but every time I do it, nobody knows. It's one of my favorite actual real jokes. Tell it. And nobody knows. No one knows where it's from. I can't remember, but um, so, so the joke is, uh, I recently had a threesome, but it was a bad, it was a bad kind. It was me and another guy and another guy. <laughs> I know whose joke that is. Who's? That's Spencer Tegmeyer's joke, actually. I never, I don't even know who that is. Yeah. You, he's, he's one of those people who Dan met in another city and forces you to watch videos of when you're having coffee with him. That's how come you know the joke. You've probably seen it 17 times on Dan's iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great joke. Never hey, watch this never joke. It's one of my favorite jokes. Watch Dan. this joke. Um, all right. Where am I at? Let's see. Where am I at in the itinerary of what we're doing? Um, let's go straight to um, Mary Fuck Kill. Well, while we wait for that, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me pull it up. It says who farted, although it's in backwards. I think you stole this from, uh, uh, from, from like, uh, was it BC? No, that's mine too. <laughs> it's backwards. It says who farted. I think no, we see it. it. We see it right. Yeah, I think right. you stole it from Calvin and Hobbes. All right. You uh, watch out for this bear. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Wait, so Allen. Like I'm, I'm gonna Lance. mute Lance. H. Lance, Allen, Lance, 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 fuck Lance, kill. Lance, yeah. Lance, is the is the is is the who farted? Is that connected to the owl? Is the owl the one who farted? Like who farted? Is that what it is? Oh, I should. I didn't think about that. Like that jokes, that farted. jokes. H. Allen, <laughs> how many fart? Yeah. H. Allen, go, Mary, go, go. fuck, kill, Doctor Fauci, Joe Exotic, mm. murder hornets. Definitely, definitely fuck Dr. Fauci because fuck Dr. Fauci. Okay. All the fucking and the hand jobs, and I have a thing for little men. Um, and uh, Joe Exotic should be murdered. So that means I have to marry the Hornets. Which I mean, you know, there's 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 a lifetime legacy there. I could some beautiful happiness could come from the. I think Hornets. I think that's the way to go. I wanna I wanna marry the murder Hornets. So I'm in I'm in the the inner circle for when the shit goes down, and then I'll yeah, well, fuck Fauci also, for the antidote. Talk to you. The murder hornets wouldn't talk to me. Yeah, so it's like a night you can you're just quiet, which is nice. I yeah, want that. but they got my back because because they don't want to fuck up the household situation. So yeah, you know I don't exactly. have to do anything. I don't have to bang them. All the things, and then uh, and then that leaves uh, murdering Joe Exotic, which is fine. Uh, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. His, his heyday is gone. He doesn't even have the zoo anymore. Uh, Lance is <laughs> taking his <laughs> shirt off. That's where we're at. <laughs> 
<laughs> Welcome. <laughs> well, I like how I like how uh, the equipment behind Lance is for a better show. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't even bring in the the stops for this one. He didn't hook up his microphone. He's got equipment, but he didn't hook any of it up. This is a veteran show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's for my dis- that's for my disabled children show. <laughs> 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 okay, Adam, Mary fuck, kill Dr. Fauci, murder hornets, and Joe Exotic. Well, I've been locked up by myself for the past two months, so at this point, I'm going to fuck anybody. Fuck right? them all. So, fuck them all. Fuck them all. And uh, after my last experience, I'm never going to marry anybody. So fuck them all. Don't marry any of them. And I don't know, kill whoever has a problem with it. How about that? Oh, fuck. <laughs> at midnight, Adam gets dark. It gets real gross here at midnight. It's late Adam. night, Adam. Late night, Adam. <laughs> late night, Adam. Nobody knows that reference except for us. Um, here's the thing. Yeah, Adam's. So we have this. We have this bit about how Adam's voice is so grimy and uh, and gravelly that uh, late night, Adam. He becomes sort of a philosopher, and everybody sort of <laughs> slows down. Late Adam, but for some reason, late night, Adam, his voice recorrects to sound like a normal person. Um, I'm just saying that voice. Like that, that's a, that's a marketable voice. Adam. Is that, that sexy? Is a sexy voice. That is a sexy voice. You got to rock that. That is Thank awesome. You. H. Thank Allen you. Scott, uh, uh, murder, fuck kill, Adam Gable, Adam Gable, and Adam Gable. <laughs> oh, all of them. <laughs> Cause after a while, I just can't take the voice anymore. It's too good. Yeah. Adam, you said, uh, you said you, you said you were married. What's, um, tell us about marriage. Tell you about marriage. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't, uh, it doesn't What's, go. Go ahead. What's your greatest accomplishment? Uh, well, my greatest accomplishment is managing to figure out how to do this and still do a little bit of that. I don't know what that means. This is, I was not prepared, but I'll tell you I, this. I think, I think, I think, uh, I gotta, I gotta be honest. I take a little bit of the blame for Adam's uh, failure of marriage because I, I put Adam in a position to do a lot of road shows that no one should, no one should do. Comedians shouldn't do what we do. But uh, so Adam at almost 40 had to go home and like tell his wife that he was going to go do shows with Dan Fregola in Altoona, Pennsylvania for no money. And nobody <laughs> wants their husband to do that at 40. Like he was, yeah, she he was didn't. Adam has an Emmy. Adam is look, Adam. Show us your Emmy. It's, I put it away. You want me to Adam's a very it? successful uh, okay. production individual, and he and I, I've ruined his life. I think in a lot of ways. Well, you know, my wife, uh, she didn't like me chasing after my lifelong dream. It didn't help that my lifelong dream was to become a single father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that sort of exp- explains the whole thing. I'm not. That joke's so funny that H. Allen's entire shoulder disappeared. That's how great that joke was. <laughs> It disappeared. And then the, his shoulder was eaten by a cheesecake because what? of the joke. Yeah. Um, I would show you my background, but it's filled with like wigs and shit. Yeah, that's fine. Well, you got you got your drag stuff behind you. Yeah, all of it. it it's Rip funny it. how it's funny to cover up your like drag stuff that you put up the Golden Girls, right? You might as well yeah. have like. <laughs> might as well well, have, like I don't knew, want you guys to see no. how gay I am, so I'm gonna. If I'm gonna you put knew, the Golden if Girls you knew background. my background with the tattoo and the podcast and everything, the Golden Girls are very much on brand. No, no, it's it's very much in line. You know, with, uh, the with, only thing that could be gayer than what you got right there is like a wax figure of Liberace. That's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can show. Well, um, oh, hold right. on. It's not Liberace, but it's a Barbie. Oh, that's a pretty good that's one. That's like 50s Barbie. I love that Barbie. Yeah. yeah. We got a lot of them. We got a lot of them. Uh, H. Allen, you have, do, you, did you, do you have an interesting virginity loss story? Yes, I do. It also involves a doll. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, um, I, I, I lost my virginity to Dennis Rodman. But wait, let me explain, because it's a comedy show. Uh, I, yeah, I was, I was, I was, four, I was turning 14. When I was that, I was, had turned 14. And I had gotten a gift for my birthday, a gag gift. It was like when Dennis Rodman was like, if he, if he was ever relevant, it was when he was relevant. And um, Dennis and Rodman. The, Dennis Rodman, yes. And I had gotten this doll, and I, there was this guy that I had a crush on that he would come over and play. He would, you know, he would come over to like my house and hang out and spend the night, and whatever. And one night, we were like, kind of fooling around or something and he looked at this Dennis Rodman doll. Now meanwhile we were watching Mel Brooks's Dracula Dead loving it by the way which I was loving it because of Mel Brooks <laughs> um, and I we were naked watching Mel Brooks films and then he grabbed the Dennis Rodman doll and he asked if I wanted to have fun and then the next thing I knew I was getting cornholed by the most flamboyant NBA player ever in the history of the NBA um, 
and 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 then I got cornholed by like the actual dick, but like the Dennis Rodman doll was the entry to things coming inside me. You got you got a Dennis Rodman. Uh, what what was the hairstyle of the Dennis Rodman that went up your butt? Well, it was it was it was part of the plastic, so there was no actual hair like a Barbie, but it was a part. It was a Mattel doll, I believe. Yeah, yeah, but he had, um, remember when he had the he had like the leopard print. Yes, hair yes, that was but big. it was painted on. His hair was painted on yeah, the which, doll, so yeah, which it was style? perfect entry. So I went head first, you know, and it was you, you. If you hold the arms of the doll and you put the head in first, it actually works as a very convenient sex. You got to get past the because, shoulders. Everybody who's ever given birth, get the shoulders is the hardest part. Well. Trust me, I got past the shoulder. <laughs> and you, you put it in and- Wait, you... what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then- Someone then it's, then it's... explain uh, sodomy to, to Lance, please. I, I, think, I think in some way, my having lost my virginity, Dennis Rodman, connects me to like international peace with Kim Jong-un negotiations. Like I think there's some connection there that will happen for me. I'm not sure yet. Brad, I don't know if Brad is heckling or not. Brad says, is this a chat show or a comedy show? And we're going to say, it's both, brother. It's both. That was, that was literally a bit, but we turned it into panel. So we're going down the line, asking each other yeah. questions, doing the thing. Um, again, thank you guys for being here uh, and part of this thing. Thank you for being veterans and supporting uh, this country and keeping us safe. Uh, this right now at the moment is, uh, is a show that you got off of Vet Ticks, whatever way that you bartered to get the, the tickets. Um, we appreciate you and, and thank you so much. Uh, we also, we've opened it up in the email. If you wanted to tip the comedians, it is hard times out here. Uh, you can tip us at Venmo, CBKS tour, uh, Venmo. Uh, there's also, Hey, if email. anybody's hungry, have some pretzels. Let me know and, if you guys want and Lance some has some pretzels there. for you. Lance, there... true or false? You spend, you spend some of your time deliberately writing, uh, bad jokes for fun. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do sometimes. It's, it's if we could stay in the format, true or false? True, yes. Can you tell us a bad joke? Sure. And um, uh, what do you call uh uh? What does a crappy gynecologist say? What? I'm at your cervix. <laughs> <laughs> tell us another one. Uh, what do you call poop that walks through walls? What? Spooky dookie. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Any more? Uh, I can never be a horse jockey. Okay. Because I don't even know what kind of music horses listen to. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Uh, let's see. Uh, Adam. Yes. True or false? Um, your birthday is soon. Uh, yeah, no, my birthday's coming up. That's right. My, that is true. My birthday's coming up. Do you still get gifts from your folks? Is that still a thing? Uh, no, yeah. I mean, sometimes, like, my... my uh, my father's sometimes they give me, but you know, they're very good at it, right? Like the, like one time for my anniversary, my father, one time for our anniversary, my father got my, uh, my ex-wife and I a $100 gift certificate to the Four Seasons restaurant. And it sounds, it sounds like a good gift, right? Until you realize that dinner for two at the Four Seasons costs like $300. Right. So basically he gave us a bill for $200. And to be born in Portland, that's like four thousand dollars. That's like a lot of money. That's like a lot of money. I also, uh, I don't know. If you you have pretzels? That. Did you double down on the pretzels? Uh, well, no. Lance has the pretzels. Uh, this one's actually full of coins. Oh. That's all right. I'll eat the coins too. I'll eat, I'll eat the so coins. So Jewish, I thought it was going to be a giant thing of uh, of pickles. Honestly, I'll eat, I'll eat the coins if that's what we're doing. If we're eating on the no. pretzels. Jars. No, the Corona. Don't eat the coins. Let's don't ask. Let's coins. ask H because uh, H Allen. What? What is, if we all have giant jars of things? What would be in your giant jar right now? Adams is coins. Lance's is pretzels. What's in your giant jar? Oh fuck. My my giant well right now my giant jar would be like hand wipe shit. I'm obsessive. Fair. I have all everything everywhere. Fair. Hand sanitizer like I it's a yeah it, but uh, yeah hand sanitizer definitely definitely right. little ones the tiny little hey, ones. Challenge true or false? Uh, you are in remission. Yes, I am. I had cancer. I've had everything. I've had Mormon, Dennis Rodman, Jewish, cancer. Wig. I feel like H. Allen is just curating his stories for Portland. <laughs> yep, I am. You know, you know, it's funny. Before all this started, I was going to Portland for a film festival for Latter-day Jew, and then it all got canceled. 
Man. So here we are. We're here to pl- we're here to plug it. When- so when does Latter Day Jew? Now that there are no movie theaters, when does this thing? How- what's going to happen? And when do we get to see it? How do we see it? Uh, soon, very soon, this summer, most likely. They're they're waiting to tell me a date, but there is a deal in place, and it has been sold. It's been what? It's been sold to a very oh. popular streaming platform that I can't say the name of right. Now. Oh, very good. So uh, <laughs> shout out, uh, s- Crackle. Um, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Was- right. <laughs> Okay, yeah. what else is the other thing? We did the dad jokes. We did the hey, Adam. Um, what hey, is, you want to uh, hear a good, a good uh, fun fact about Portland? Go for sure. it. Yeah. Oh, the, um, you guys know that, that Portland has that people mover that goes from the hospital from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've been to Portland, they have that. The only other place that there's one of those is in New York City, the uh, one that goes to Randall's Island. Like, that's not a ski lift, right? Those oh, the, um, the tram. tram. Yeah, yeah, there's ski lift other places, but as far as actual transportation, the only two in the country are Portland and New York City. And then, yeah, tram. And what's then, that um, weird thing in, in uh, what's that weird thing in Pittsburgh that goes up the hill? What is that? That's like a rail car thing. That's not the same. Yeah, it's like a ra- railway. But there's only two people movers transportation wise. There was maybe going to build a third one in Washington, D.C., but it hasn't come out yet. Did you just Google this? No, it's something I just know. Oh, fair enough. It looked like you were reading it. No, uh, no, no. Something I know. H. Allen, do you have any random Portland facts? Uh, well, I, I, I have a feeling Mary Kay Latouro is from there. Am I wrong about that? I don't know. But if I am correct on it, um, I, I love her. Oh, someone says, that, someone says, someone uh, says, uh, Aaron says to Lance, it's called a tram. And then, yeah, he called, mm-hmm. and then she called you a son of a bitch. She didn't call <laughs> you a son of a bitch. I added that. But <laughs> <laughs> if, if Mary Kay Latoro isn't from Portland, she's the one who slept with the, the kid in her class. And then they fell in love later. Remember that she like had a baby with a 13 year old. Well, no, I'm, not, I'm not up on the teachers that bang the students storylines. It was a huge story. You know it. Google it. You definitely know it. Anyway, uh, the DJ, the kid became a DJ in Portland and uh, and he's now a man. And yeah, that's my favorite thing about Portland. Wait, uh, Megan and Michael says I used to see it in my bathroom. Megan and Michael, are you talking about the tram? Your, your bathroom view is the tram? This is okay. This is a very good Whoa. tidbit, guys. This is a good tidbit. Portland. Oh, wow. Portland. Portland has the world's smallest park. I that's wonder. The world's it, smallest park. Okay, that's, that's, that's what. That's what. That's what Jenny Quirkoni wrote. I mean, What's I wonder how. I don't know. Is it like how small is the small? New is York it like City uh, has some tiny parks? Well, no. I mean, like yeah, but I mean, how small is it? Like fit on the head of a pin? Is it like that, or is it's it like the a blade? Of a median. Is it a blade of grass? Wow. <laughs> it says it's about one square foot. One square foot. Well, that's like a. And then somebody you know, says Lance has the world's smallest, and then they and then they pause for dramatic effect for comedy, and then they said pretzels. <laughs> I love this. I love this crowd. This is fantastic. People plant flowers in the one square foot <laughs> thing, one little tree in a one square foot. This is the liveliest crowd we've had on these on these zooms all day. Can it. you imagine? Oh, wait, all- let me go to gallery view. Let's see if we can see us. Uh, we got Jen, who looks like she's about to uh, flash the crowd. We got Christine Burns who's uh, up close. She actually, uh, yeah, she's, she's crushing it. She's, she's got the, hold on, I got to move this. Oh, that's, that's just Lance. Nice couch. We got Steve who's got, what's the flag on Steve's wall? He's got an Italy flag. Shout out Italy. Love that. We got um, Fareed. I can't tell if, actually, I can't tell if Fareed's thing is a picture or if that's his video and he never breathes. Um, <laughs> then Aaron Catherine, that's a photo. We got a guy who's underwater. That's cool. Uh, May has left the chat. She's she's still in the chat, but she just she's not even in the room that she's uh, that she's in the thing for. Then we got then Jen is showing us her kitty cat, uh, and I do actually mean a cat. Um, Lance has left. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, what else? Okay, so where are we at? Let me get back. Let me get back to what we whatever we were doing. Um, has Lance left? No, I think Lance is back. He's back. Okay, cool. I'm gonna. I have to. I have to uh, shut off someone's video so I can get Lance back so that I can. See I'm here. Him. No, no, but it's. I gotta get it in my view. There's Lance with his shirt off. H. Allen, take your shirt off. No, I'll okay. put a wig on. Adam, true or false? Take your shirt off. <laughs> false. Adam, true or false? Uh, you're you're quarantining by yourself. You're not quarantining with your children. No, I'm not quarantining with our children. I don't. I don't see them very much. Although. I do have a lot of pictures of them around my apartment. So I always remember who I'm doing this to get away from. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have any questions for me? Oh, either either crowd or, or comedians. Dan, um, what, have you, what have you learned about yourself in the quarantine? 
God. Um, I don't know, man. You know what? It's, uh, um, I'm trying to understand the, the everyday like sadness, happiness range. And in the quarantine, it's hard because it, it really is. I, like today is the most productive day I've had in a long time. So you wake up every morning and if you don't really have anything to do, you just sort of want to go back to bed. And, you know, you can do a little bit of that as a comedian. You can take a Monday off and that sort of thing, but then you got to get back on stage. So I think, um, I think, I think everything I thought I would do and be during this quarantine, I've, I've doubled back on. Like I thought I was going to get like ripped and I was going to like read all these books and do all this stuff. So I think the thing I've learned the most is that, uh, there are not that many hours in the day and I am a lazy son of a bitch. Yeah. Lance, what have you learned? <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I've learned, uh, I, I, in all honesty, I'm trying to appreciate things more, right? Because think of all the things that we had that we- You're very now, spiritual. That's what I like I, about you. Well, I try to be, you know, I'm trying, you know. Um, think of all the things we can't do now. So I'm even trying to appreciate, like, if I get to eat meat, I'm like, maybe we don't have meat in eight months. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm, like, I'm appreciating eating meat or like, I'm trying to be, I, I'm really learning that like, and you know, life changes so much so quick for all of us, even with or without this. It's like, I'm really trying to hunker down and appreciate each thing I have, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, H. Allen, you're, uh, you're, you're quarantined with your boyfriend. I am. What's yeah. the sex life? Is it um, like, were you living together before this or what's the vibe? Yeah, for a long time. Uh, it, it's basically a debate of how much, is, how much we eat in the night. Uh, because yeah. oftentimes in quarantine, it's, no, nah, I'm too full for that. Yeah, that's funny. Has anything... You know, no, I, I like it. No, so has anything changed in that in that regard? It's like um, now, because now you're in each other's faces. I, I'm I'm trying to understand how people who live in such tight quarters, um, how you transition. Like like you said, like how do you transition from ice cream to sex? I don't understand. I mean, well, you don't because one of us is lacto, so that definitely doesn't happen. <laughs> um, but. Uh, you don't, you just, it, for us, I mean, we're lazy. We're, we are lazy people. We're home all the time. I mean, yeah. comics are inherently lazy. Are you talking about the gays and, in general? Or no, <laughs> I'm talking about me. Cause oh, the gays oh. are not, the gays are not lazy. They oh, are very okay. active people. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's being home, be, being forced to be home is actually kind of just like, okay, it's Tuesday. Like it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's just, it's what we do. Uh, fair enough. Uh, sorry, I was responding to the comments. I'm getting heckled here in the comments uh, by, by people in the show. Um, it's great, <laughs> uh, Lance. What else? What do you have another? Do you have another crazy story? Now, well, you've been doing the meeting bombs. Actually, tell me about the meeting bombs thing. What's the weirdest like meeting bomb you've done? So Lance is doing this thing where he he break he breaks into Zoom chats. Uh, it's pre-planned. It's kind of a practical joke, but like let's say 80% of the people in the Zoom chats or meetings don't know that it's happening and like the, you know, the organizer knows. So what's the weirdest one you've done and how has it gone? I just put it in the chat. Let's see if it, I put a file in the chat. I thought it would pop up, but apparently- Oh, what's the file? Now people got to click it, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, what is oh. it? Just tell us what it is. You got to click on it. This is a chat show, you son of a bitch. Tell me the story. Click on it and you'll <laughs> see. I don't want to. Oh, it's his dick. Um, <laughs> click to open. What is it? Oh, there's your meeting bomber photo. There you go. Yeah, it's but I don't know saying. why you sent that photo. That's just who you currently are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's what you're saying. I've been, I've been, so I posted that as a joke three weeks ago. Yeah. And since then, uh, Pix11, uh, a, a, a news station here in New York City. Well, I'm, I'm currently uh, about an hour and a half outside of New York, but I'm from New I live in New York. Um, they ran a story on it and, uh, I'm, I'm now getting hired to come into people's zoom and like Google hangout meet, whatever, uh, and like bomb their things. Yeah. Well, what, what do you do when you're, when you actually bomb? Like what, like what's the weirdest thing you've done? Um, there's all kinds of stuff really, to be honest with you. There's all, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, I, you can, I, there's, I play characters. Um, I sing people happy birthday. There's all. I mean, there's even something as simple as like... Thank you to H. Allen for reiterating my question since he didn't answer it the first time. <laughs> there's so much, it is so wait, much wait, fun. I'm going to go back. We're back on you. Go for, tell us. That's it? You just come in and juggle? What's up? You just come in and juggle? That's what you do? Well, like, I'll, I'll roast people if there's like... I've been paid to roast a couple things. Yeah. Like roast Yelp. Allen. Right, roast H. Allen right now. Right now? I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for such an event. <laughs> he doesn't know enough about me. 
Christine is mad. Christine Br uh, Bruns, Bruns, Christine Bruns is mad that you've uh, that you flashed off your uh, your endless supply of toilet paper. That's it. That's the end of it. Yeah. Has anybody? Has anybody? You just keep four rolls around just so you can do the thing. Has yeah, anybody Dan, run Dan, out of toilet Dan, paper in this? Dan, when does the show start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, has anybody run out of toilet paper through this thing? Yeah, we have. You run out? What? How'd you get it? How did I get? How did I restock it? I went to yeah. the store, um, and I bought more toilet paper when things were available. But for a while, there was wet wipes. Yeah, wet wipes. Yeah, wet wipes are in are in a gay man's arsenal. So we got um, what do we got? We got some, we got some we got some comments. So this person says no because I don't wipe my ass forty times a day. Well, good for you, Jared, for uh, having a, a very healthy diet. Uh, high tech. We just cut up paper towels into thirds. I don't know. I, I gotta figure out the math on that. I uh, I actually I ran out of toilet paper, but fortunately Lance had given me a bunch of flyers for Z uh, Zoombomber. <laughs> so just, I was yeah, all it, yeah, pretty much, pretty much any rough piece of paper, if you crumble it up enough times, turn it, turns well, into toilet well, paper. Well, here's – actually, it turns out that Lance was so cheap that he actually printed the flyers on toilet paper because it was way cheaper at Kinko's. So it was perfect. <laughs> Boom. Got to love Adam for the, for, the, for the 90s Kinko's references. That company's been out of business and called FedEx for years. I love Adam Gable. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, that, that joke goes back to, uh, to H. Allen's background. Uh, Jen, 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 Jenna, Jenna Query Con. I don't know. She put Portland. too many. She put cues, and I can't do it. But she says with a bidet, one roll lasts me two plus months. Uh, just don't use nettles. What's a nettle? Does know. anybody know what a nettle is? Like a neti pot. Oh, is it the thing that shoots out at you? You can like a leaf. It to your she, says a, she says a nettle is a leaf, and then Aaron Catherine says Google it. Apparently, this is a this is an inter uh, Portland thing that we need to know about. I love how somebody jumped in to tell you to Google it, which is like the Get least in there, helpful. Google it. It's a right, wild plant that stings. Oh, I see. Don't wipe your ass with a nail. Oh, okay. Uh, like, okay. Uh, has anybody else gotten uh, poison ivy on their penis? No. 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 Just I'll tell you, what are you doing? Show, who's really getting into it is Steve. He was taking a nap. Now he's popped up. He's ready to go. Who's where's Steve? Where'd he go? <laughs> he's in the hoodie. He was he was lounging back there. Oh, now he was chilling. I know. I can't tell. I, have, I can't. I'm gonna put. Hold on. I'm gonna highlight Steve for a second. I can't tell what's going on with Steve. If he's um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm allowed to put him in spotlight. I've been I've been looking at Steve the whole there time. He is. I love there him. He is. <laughs> there, Steve. I'm trying great. to figure. Out, so I only put this on so I can figure out what's going on in the background here. Uh, and I still have him muted, so he can't even. We can basically just like go in on him without. Are you? He, First of he all, looked, everything looks on the up and up over his right shoulder, but then on the left, it looks like he's broken into someone else's house. And it's like they haven't even finished the wall. What's going on? I'm going to unmute him. Steve, what's going think, on? Why don't you have a wall? <laughs> I'm, re I'm renovating. Okay. That's a good, that's a good fake answer. Uh, wait, do you have a microphone there? Are you, are you like a full-on podcaster? Uh, no, but something I'm looking at doing in the future. Fair enough. Nice. We like it. He's, I, I promise his podcast will be more successful than mine within a week. <laughs> and then a really he won't be bummer. talking yeah, about porn out, stars. Shout out Italy. Shout out Naples. Um, what other weird tapestries do you have hanging on that thing? Uh, yeah, some, something I got from uh, the, uh, the Chinese gardens down here. I don't even know what it is, but it look good. Is it? <laughs> I'm going to do another random pop in. Hold on. I'm going to do another random pop in. You don't, you won't know who it is. I'm going to pop in on Jenna Quiricon. I don't know why that, what is that name? How many, pick a, pick a vowel. Hold on. I'm going to unmute you. It's Italian. Jenna, oh, there's a bunch of Italians out here in Portland, baby. Get it. Fred That's me. Fred Gugliletto. We're getting it. Lance, what are you? Are you Italian, Lance Weiss? Yeah, I'm Italian. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey, my great, hey, little story. My great grandfather was a stowaway on a ship from Italy into Ellis Island. Awesome. Is that the end yeah. of the story? That, that's all I have. I don't know any more about it. Uh, little, by the way, that, uh, it's because Lance's great grandfather was a rat. <laughs> <laughs> he was a small actually, man. He actually is he was one of the rats that brought the plague over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Instead was, of Zoom uh, meetings, they, they, he, he, he bombed immigration. The, uh, this was, this was the, I can't remember which chat this came up in. This came in with one of the chats. Somebody was like trying to figure out what happened, um, about, uh, no. Cause every time we get a plague, we always try to blame an animal. So it always, there's always that question that comes about, which is who, who fucked a bat? And that was who, who got the original COVID. What, how did we, how did we end up with the situation? 
Sounds like a story H. Allen would have told. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. I was just thinking that. I was like, did Dennis Rodman? Do, is there a connection yeah. to Dennis Rodman? I gotta, too? Quick, I got to tell my virginity story where I shoved a bat in my ass and got coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> but only the plastic ones. I'll only do the plastic ones. It was one of those bats from like that day at Yankee Stadium because that's the perfect size, if you ask me. Adam, does anybody think? <laughs> Adam, since we're on since we're on the topic, does anybody say? Does anybody tell you that uh, that you resemble anybody? Oh, does anybody tell me who I resemble? Well, you know, a lot of, uh, people tell me a lot. My favorite one, of course, is that everyone thinks that I sound like Jewish Batman. <laughs> That's the one that I get all the time. I actually made some shirts for the Jewish Batman. Yes. You want me to get the shirts? I'll get the go shirt. Get the shirt. Yeah, I'm gonna get the shirt. I'd rather uh, not, actually. What is it? I'd rather not. <laughs> Lance, we all just want you to have your shirt back on. All right. No, um, nobody wants that. Where am I? Let's see. What else do we have? Any other questions from the from the peanut gallery? Oh, there's I a chat that I haven't seen. So to be um, honest, I gotta admit I wasn't planning on uh plugging the shirts, but of course Lance needs a shirt. So maybe Lance yeah, would this is like, perfect for Lance. Maybe Lance might enjoy one of my uh it's see it's uh Jewish. Yeah, you had it. Right Jewish there. Batman, right like that. It's a Jewish Batman, right? Like Bat. that. You can see uh, the hats. And I like uh, we love yeah. it. I'm gonna, I wasn't, I'm gonna do it. Wait, I'm gonna do another quick pop in because this is I don't know why everybody in Portland is like like slightly creepy. So she's just stroking the the kitten. Just There's so nothing creepy about, about that. It's adorable. It's a little creepy. Uh, I, all right, what else? Um, Portland. Portland. I, I'm not. I'm not in Portland. Oh, where are you? Portland. Oh, where are you now? A town called Longview, Washington. How far are you from Portland? About <laughs> One more time. About 60 miles downriver. One hour. That counts. You're closer to Portland than the rest of us. Adam was just humming in the middle. Adam does the most grandfatherly shit randomly. He was just it's humming in the middle. Song, uh, it's a song Longview by Green Day. And I was wondering <laughs> if it was about Longview, Washington. But maybe Got it. it. Does she know that? I don't know. know that. But did you know that Longview has a squirrel festival? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Several years we've had a squirrel festival. We have squirrel bridges. In fact, we have the world's oldest bridge dedicated to squirrels. It's called the Nutty Narrows. It has its own Wikipedia entry. No shit. How yeah. do the squirrels wow. know to use the bridge? Uh, experience. <laughs> well, that's our show for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, this person, you know Aaron Catherine, says, Dan, what exit on the Turnpike or, or, uh, or Parkway? I actually live in Hoboken, New Jersey, so I'm not on any of the highways, uh, unfortunately or, or fortunately for me. Um, ooh, there's still more people joining the, the chat here. Um, all right, fair enough. Um, what else? H. Allen, is there any stories yeah. that we had on this sheet <laughs> that we didn't get to? <laughs> oh. to? Fuck, I don't even remember. I don't know. I'm just having fun chatting. I was, trying, I was trying to pitch you to tell your remission story, your, uh, your chemo story. Oh, yeah, my chemo story. Sorry, yes, yes, yes. Um, so I, when, during chemo, I need, it wasn't in remission. It was when I was Is actually- Is this a story about Dennis Rodman in the butt, though? No, but it does have to do with the other part of my body that, that hasn't Got done it. it. So, you know, it's both sides. Um, I, you know, when you're in chemo, like I was in chemo five days a week, six hours a day, like a long time hard. And you get to a point where you start to lose yourself. You know what I mean? Like you start to f stop being the person you are. And literally the only thing that I could do to get back to the person that I felt I was before cancer came was to just masturbate everywhere I was, everywhere I went, Home Depot, Shell gas station you know uh, any shop bookstores like it just it, it didn't matter where i was in the was bathroom yes if there was a restroom i had to do it and it became a game for me during chemo to like feel alive and a little naughty you know what i mean it, like it, it was it was it, it made me feel good I have this game. I do the same thing uh, as a comedian. When when I go on the road, there's always uh, uh, you go to a hotel and there's always two beds, right? So you always put your stuff down on the first bed, and then you immediately come on the other bed. That's the come bed. That's what that oh, bed. Oh man, I've uh. shared a hotel room with you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry, so I cut you off. Is that so? I don't. No, so why good. is We're that good. a chemo? Why is that a chemo related story? Are, are, because it was during chemo. So it just, it, it was just, the, it was the thing. If you were listening, it was the thing that 
like during chemo made me feel like myself. It is. It is funny. Lance, Lance hit it on the head. It's like, hey, I, I'm like, I'm like, hey, Chow, do you have a story about chemo? And he's like, yeah, I used to masturbate a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Hey, do you have a story about your virginity? Yeah, I fucked Dennis Rodman. Yep. <laughs> and you know what? Not, I'm not sitting in a wicker chair. They're bouncing around, not listening to people. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to I was just trying to get the connection. You know I love HL the H Allen. I what love, you, I love. You do have a bunch of wicker in the back behind you though. I, I do. I do. You do. Yeah, this, I don't know. This chair could go good. This chair could go good in uh, I like in, it. It's a good it's a good presentation. Yeah. It makes you look very, you know, more mature than you are. Yeah. I don't the, all the furniture in this apartment is outdoor furniture that we've moved inside. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, what else, uh, Lance? Did you have other? You told you told us the 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 hundred and twenty uh, anniversary story, right? Did you tell us that story. Yes, I did tell you that story. Did you tell us a story about you 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 did comedy on a on a bus. Yeah, but I don't want to tell that story. <laughs> okay, I want to tell you about this. I've been thinking about this recently. I thought I thought about this today. You know how um, well everybody's got a different view on this stuff, right? I don't know what what like you know people protesting and whatnot. I think it's funny that people are protesting, uh, they're like, oh, I, I don't wanna leave my house or like, or, or I wanna leave my house and I'm, I'm bored and I gotta, I gotta get out. I'm like, I'm like, you are 600 pounds and you have a bunch of shit in your front yard. <laughs> like when you get that shit taken care of, then you get to go protest. Like you don't get to protest until like your yard is nice and you like are somewhat of a healthy human being and like have painted, like there's so much to do. There's, there's so much to do. How are you, how it was are you going out? Yeah, it was frustrating for me. So at the beginning of this thing, I was setting up all the videos that if you get out of quarantine and you're, and you like, you like haven't painted the fence, then you're a dick. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I said, I've been lazy during this thing, but I've been talking to people in other countries. Now I was doing chats earlier uh, with South Africa and, and then I had to really, try to make these people understand why Americans would protest the right to leave the house during a pandemic. And, and it's, it's one of the hardest things to try to explain to people of another country who have far less yeah. like rights than we do that. Like, we're just mad that we can't go to the grocery store without a mask. That's like, that's what it's come to. It's and insane. that's why I'm happy we're doing this show in Portland. I feel like these people can appreciate it. If we did this show in like Texas, those people would be like, fuck you. I want to go outside. You don't get to protest until you've got everything taken care of your taxes, your health and your front yard. Right. I, I don't. I think that if you're talking to people in South Africa, they're 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 probably not surprised with anything that they hear from Americans, given the fact that 50 percent of our population can't agree on when their uh, their president, their most famous celebrity, actually died. Right? Like they can't. They're not worried about us uh, staying home. They understand that. They're just trying to tell us that that Nelson Mandela lived past the mid 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so there's one. Who was the? Uh, they, they always do the thing. Uh, what do they do? They always do the 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 double movies, right? With Adam, was there two Nelson Mandela movies? One of them was Morgan Freeman, and one of them was uh, the the Morgan Freeman one was Invictus with Matt Damon. But yeah. I don't remember another yeah. one. I think I think you're confusing the fact that there was a deep impact in Armageddon, and Morgan Freeman was in a deep impact. <laughs> I, I don't love deep impact. I don't think that's what I'm doing. Are you going to make this another butt joke, H. Allen? No, 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 I no. Love but deep I do love Deep Impact. They so let me ask you, H. Allen, uh, uh, as any, like, it's just, a, just, I'm, I'm a guard. <laughs> I'm Armageddon it in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> just because dudes are sort of the grimiest when it comes to, like, reach outs and, like, dirty texts. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, so usually I'll try to ask my female guest, has anybody like come out of the woodwork on you in the quarantine trying to, trying to hook up now? Have your exes come out of the woodwork? Are you getting like random dick pics without being asked? I do like how you equate gay men to, uh, well, you just like you women and gay men. You're the same. I'm no, I, no, I equate the, the fact that dudes <laughs> but, are gross but, and I know nobody's I, sending me dick pics. Well, true. Uh, I will say gay dudes are also gross. Um, also, like if I got sent a vagina pic, I would just be happy. Like that's not that's yeah. not a thing I would complain yeah. about. Dad, I, I but, just sent you. I just sent you a dick pic. I just want you to know. <laughs> um, I, and guys, I, I posted it into the chat. Uh, and you guys have to download it to your phone right next to the link. No, no, no. I think I think I think gay dudes are a bit more liberal with our communication. So wait, say it again. We're more liberal with our communication. We're not, we don't obsess over it like straight dudes do. 
Wait, wait, did Lance just throw another thing in the chat? <laughs> it's a dick pic. I'm really afraid to open it. <laughs> Fantastic. I wish, is there any way I can, I don't know how to share the screen on just the level. Click on it. To make it fast enough. For just click on it. It's a dick pic. I know, I did, I did click on it. I'm very happy with it. But Everyone's I wanted, to make, click I wanted to make it for everybody. But I can't do that. I can't do that fast enough. Uh, yeah. Where's Lance? What else? You got another drawing to show us? <laughs> Everyone's going to get that joke on their own time. <laughs> <laughs> just like just like your act, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. All right, what else? I mean, we, we've, done, we've done the hard work of what we were supposed to do for the show. I really, again, I appreciate you guys, the, the, all the Vetix people, for, for being a part of this. Like I said, tipping is not uh, a necessary part of this, but as comedians, we don't know when we're going to get a chance to make money again. So if you wanted to tip us, if you had fun, we appreciate it. There's hey. also a thing on the Vetix deal there where you can review the show. Uh, I don't know why I'm on Alan, sorry, uh, where you can review the show. So if you had a good time tonight and you want to review the show on the on the Vetix thing, that means a lot to us to get a good review. We really appreciate that. Please give us a good review. Uh, if you had a bad time in this uh, chat situation, then uh, just keep it to yourself. Nobody likes to snitch. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, Lance has his thing. Oh, Lance is posting clips uh, of his uh, meeting bombs. If you guys want to hire him to come into uh, your Zoom meetings, if you have uh, jobs that are still going, uh, and then his news story. Uh, H. Allen, do you have uh, – how, how do we find you on the Internet? It's just at H. Allen Scott. Is that right? On everything, yeah. And then Adam Gable is uh, A.J. Gable. Again, it's in the email I sent everybody. Um, back to Lance. I just like looking at Lance. AdamTellsJokes.com. How many, how many days have you got guys gone without showering? Three. I think, I think you have the record. I've gone four. Yeah, I got three. Four is, I do not recommend it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty brutal. Well, you know, I know a lot of people who are, uh, who are having babies and are getting married and are, uh, you know, they're having, um, they're having, you know, um, Maybe showers, and they're having a. Uh, uh, all right, let's just forget I said anything. Right? Whatever. Were you, were, you, were, you doing the bit? were you doing the bit? You bailed on the bit. What are you talking about? Uh, when we can, what's the best place in Portland for amateur comedy? I'd really like to try stand up. Uh, wherever Dan is performing. As a comedian, you always want to see that uh, that the, that the show's going uh, so good that the, that everybody in the audience thinks that they can do what you do. That's what, that's what comedians love to see. Hey, <laughs> it's the only job where people watch it and they go, I bet I could do that. Uh, <laughs> Lance says wherever Dan is performing. Um, you know what? I, my favorite place in Portland, and, and I've tried to uh, uh, produce an album there a couple of different times, is the Hawthorne Theater. They have two different rooms in Portland that, that are really fantastic. Portland, Eugene are two of my favorite places to, to, to just um, be in general and do comedy. Uh, I know Portland has a helium now, right? Uh, and a bunch of other incredible places. But basically the rule for being a comedian is and, <laughs> and sort of has this idea when he when he tried to do comedy on a on a mega bus is you just you just start doing comedy. Uh wherever mm -hmm. you get up, you just go to an open mic and you just start doing it the first time. Um, There's also a really great room if you don't want to be around a lot of straight dudes, which sometimes that can be really bad for stand-up comedy in terms of amateur stuff. So there's a place called CC Slaughter or Slaughterhouse or something. It's like a in gay Portland. bar in Portland, and it's a it's a it's a it's a pretty inclusive space for comedy. Very cool. Stuff sometimes. Uh, massage is another job that folks think they can do is easy. That's that's from Jen again. Um, CC Slaughter. Okay. Oh, she's, oh, she's confirming. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's weird. And then somebody uh, where, at the beginning, I promised I would send out all the stripper shout outs. Cause I think we did. We mentioned that um, Portland's one of the strip club capitals of the world. Uh, so uh, in, that notion, in that notion, uh, I have a podcast called porn stars are people where we interview porn stars and talk about non porn related stuff. Check that out. I got 146 episodes rocking on that thing. Uh, very fun chats with myself and 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 very famous porn stars. Uh, where's our stripper that we were we were gonna shout out? Where'd she go? Um, oh, Jen. It's Did, uh, Jenny. She's everything. Yeah. She was, she was, she was a vet. She's a stripper. All the things. Harvey's Comedy Club. Somebody says has an open mic there. So we appreciate all you guys. Uh, here's the deal, guys. You guys got the email now, uh, the defrigalette at Gmail. We're going to be doing these shows all over the country. We're kind of spread the love around, so we're going to get them listed in different markets. Earlier today, we did uh, Philadelphia. Then we did St. Louis. Then we did Portland. But every Friday, 8 
10 and midnight East Coast, which is the show that you're on, the 9 p.m. We're going to do it every week. So if you want to check out the show every week, send us an email. We'll get you the Zoom codes. But we're going to list them in other markets just to try to get some more people at it. Grannies without panties. I don't even know what that is. That's just, that's just a guy uh, having fun now. <laughs> Uh, same guy who doesn't want to waste toilet paper. Uh, grannieswithoutpanties.com. I think that's a separate thing. Um, Adam, what was your favorite, uh, your favorite like <laughs> naughty thing to do as a kid? We used to, me and my buddies used to call 1-800-FAT-GIRLS and listen to the intro before they asked us for a credit card. Did you have a thing like that growing up when porn wasn't readily accessible on the internet? I just love the idea. <laughs> this guy who wanted to go to a different website accidentally typed the website into <laughs> <laughs> like fuck this comedy show. I want to see grannies without panties. He's, a, yeah, he's already Googling his next entertainment option. <laughs> All right, they're saying goodbye. These people don't have it. Hold on, don't yet. leave yet. I got one more thing to show you guys. Is um, Lance going to pull oh, out his penis? Adam, what's the way you used to get porn as a kid? Where is it? Hold on. Uh, it's all, I don't know, like magazines and shit like that. Like weird. We used to we legit, we legit had in, in a, uh, when I, I moved to Ohio and learned to swear. I was lived in New York State for most of my life. Then I moved, moved to Ohio for first, second, and third grade and learned to swear, looked at porn, all these things. We had a, um, we literally had uh, a bunch of Playboy. We were, we were 10 year old boys and we had a bunch of Playboys buried in the empty lot in our neighborhood. Um, uh, I'm, oh, <laughs> Lance just put up a video, uh, or sorry, a screenshot of Steve. Uh, so we love that. All right, people are saying good night. We, uh, we've gone beyond the thing. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank you again to my guests, Adam Gable, H. Allen Scott, uh, Lance Weiss, Party with Lance. Follow us all. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Dan Fergalat. Again, I've been on three canceled television shows, so tonight was, uh, was a fantastic <laughs> situation for all of us. Thank you all. And we're going uh, to take this video and we're going to put it on YouTube if you really have the need to rewatch it um, every night before you go to bed. Thank you guys all for being here.